Hey everyone, I thought I'd give you a short little introduction to what's going to happen here. I'm starting to put together the Tamiya M4 EZ8, the Korean War version. Now this is a relatively new kit. It's been out for a couple months on the international market. It just came into the U.S. Uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, I pre-ordered it a while back actually, back in January, looking forward to it. My initial plans were I was going to do the devil face on the front. Uh, but now that the kit's been out a while, I've seen a few, probably a dozen, a half dozen or so, uh, online or Facebook. So I'm probably not going to go that route. I'll probably just do a, a normal, um, just all green version and focus on making it interesting through the weathering. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do with this kit is, while I build, I'm going to turn the camera on at points and talk about things that I think should be discussed or, or that are going through my head. A kind of a, a vlog, a video blog, uh, of my thoughts while I build the kit. There's not going to be anything earth shattering here, I'm sure, because it's a Tamiya kit. It's going to go together really well. There's not going to be anything major that sticks out that we're going to have to address. I'm, I'm pretty sure the kit's getting great reviews already. Um, it's based on an earlier kit, the, the World War II version from a couple years ago that Tamiya did, which is uh, a highly praised kit considered the best maybe Sherman now um, easy eight version uh, definitely uh, so we're gonna build it we're gonna talk about it while we build it now when we get into the painting and weathering things will get a little heavier and a little deeper and a little more interesting I'm sure and might provide more value to people watching uh, up until till that it, uh, everything else is gonna be my thoughts and, and maybe some entertainment and some some laughing along the way at, at myself uh, and the absurdity of, of the things I do but um, in the meantime we're gonna we're gonna put it together and talk about some things I've already recorded a couple sessions because I'm a good ways into this build already I just thought I would shoot the introduction now uh, since I have a moment um, so I thank you for joining along uh, any questions you can ask in the comments um, if there's anything particular you'd like to see, I'll try to cover it if it's, if it's something I can do that I haven't already uh, passed or, or dealt with. Uh, but, but I expect the kit to be straightforward. Um, we'll get into the heavier stuff, like I said, with the finishing process. So I hope you stick around and check out the blog uh, and, and let me know what you think. Thank you. Okay, so here we are with the first build log of the Sherman EZ8 Korean War version. This is the Tamiya kit. Just recently came out with the the funky dragon face on the front. Uh, we'll have to decide if I'm going to do that one because it's been overdone already. As little time as this kit's been out, I've seen about six of them now. Uh, but that's a story for another day. Um, I've blazed through the first ten or so steps of the instructions working on the road wheels here. Uh, no big deal with those, just a lot of cleanup, nothing nothing to write home about, nothing to worry about. Uh, the bogies themselves, uh, really easy to put together, nicely detailed. Uh, these are actually mostly molded into one piece, which is uh, refreshing. Um, you can see on the back of here you have some ejector pin marks that are quite prominent, but those will never be seen. Um, this is the back side of the bogey. You're, you'd have to pick the model up and turn it and flip it over to see these so I'm not going to obsess over those. What I am going to obsess over and the focus of this little section of the video are the ones here on the sponsoons. Um, on the other side you can see you've got four really prominent deep ones here like deep 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 uh, and then about a half a dozen raised ones uh, like these here. I've started to sand them off already. Uh, I'm using a an ultimate sanding stick here that's that's broken this is a heavier grit I'll start with those just to get that off clean those off uh, and then I'll smooth it out uh, you can see with the other one here that I've already started to tape it off for, for the putty I'm gonna either use the Bondo glazing putty here or the combi spot putty they're pretty similar I find the combi to be a little harder to sand uh, it smooths out a little better uh, but in this tight area here, I'm probably going to go with the Bondo and just spatula it on there. Uh, I can say that the masking it off really helps because if you just go in here sloppy 
and, and, and put it all around. You have more that you have to clean up that you, you don't necessarily need because I'm really sloppy with the stuff so I'd have it all over here. Uh, so I like to, to, to mask it off to make cleanup minimal. Plus there's a ridge right here. You can see there's a ridge right here that we're going to have to get up uh, close to. That's what makes these skinny sticks here uh, so nice to get in there. Uh, and the Bondo sands a little easier so we'll probably go with that. Now a lot of you will say, well this might not even be seen. Why would you waste your time with this? This is just one of my peeves. Uh, I've been working on the hull here. Uh, I'm looking to get the top hull on. The, the instructions want you to put the all the stuff on it and then glue it to the lower hull assembly. I'm not going to do that because I just break stuff off. So I was trying to uh, to get my thoughts together about how I wanted to do this. They want you to put the, the, this piece on before you glue it down. It just goes here like this. So, eh. Anyway, it goes on here like this. So I was trying to get an idea of whether or not these would even be seen under there. Uh, so if you put the, the top hull on Let's just um, do that real quick. You just put it on. Uh, to me, it makes it to where you really don't even need to, might not even need to glue it down because it's got a poly cap little system there uh, in the front here. I've got some masking tape because I drilled out the wrong hole, so I'm going to have to fill that. Uh, I do that at least once a bill, screw something up by getting in a hurry. But anyway, these slot onto here. Now, th they, go, they go in there a little flush. You can't get them. Yeah, there you go. So you can see, uh, with the tracks running along here, you actually might not be able to see them. I, this one on the back, you know, the tracks gonna wrap around here. That would be pretty easy to see, especially if you're an asshole with the pen light getting up in there. Let me see what's going on over here. Let's see. Let's check. Uh, I'm just not gonna leave those. Um, it's just lazy. It, it, it's, it's just a little extra work. Uh, goes a long way to making me feel better about it. Uh, so we're gonna do that. I'm gonna finish. Sanding the raised ones off, they're easy enough. Then I'll mask this, we'll fill it, uh, we'll sand it down, see what it looks like. Uh, spray a little spot primer. Might have to do a second coat with the Bondo. Sometimes you get air bubbles and stuff. Uh, sometimes it'll shrink up a little bit. These are pretty deep. Uh, not a big deal, not a deal breaker by any means. Um, you might not even want to mess with it. Uh, if you're going to put a lot of heavy mud here, uh, it might not be necessary. I'm probably not going to do a lot of heavy mud on this build. Looking at references, I think I'm just going to go with some lighter, dusty earth buildup. Uh, that could always change, but just in case, uh, I don't want to do a lot of heavy mud. Uh, heavy mud would cover these, surely. Uh, but I wouldn't count on that. Just, just, just do the extra work uh, and feel better about it. Or not. I mean, if it doesn't bother you. It bothers me, so that's the first little thing we're going to look at here and I'm going to get that taken care of and we'll move on with the build. Okay everyone we're back and yesterday we filled in these uh, huge ejector pin marks and smoothed out the raised ones that were there. Uh, that's taken care of rather quickly. Uh, easy enough. Nothing to worry about. Smoothed everything out with a sanding stick and and it, it's good to go. We're ready to move on. Um, uh, I'm ready now to commit to gluing this to the top well. I don't know if I'm even going to glue it uh, because it fits so well and it snaps right in. There might not need to even be a need to glue. Um, it's kind of tricky to get it all on there once you get everything of the fenders and the side guards here I put on. But but there you have it. The only the only little place is it kind of raises up here, so it'll run some a, a glue bead along there. But might actually just not attach it at all uh, until after painting it'll make getting up in here a little easier I don't know if it's really necessary uh, the, I usually like to put as much as I can together before doing any paint or anything so I'll, I'll probably just stick with, with that route with, with what works uh, while I was waiting for the the putty to dry I moved on to the to the turret and got some of it done uh, I put the little bases for the figures in there because I'm actually gonna try to do the figures for this one uh, I haven't even looked at them yet. If they look like crap, I'm not going to mess with them. Uh, but hopefully they'll, they'll look good enough that uh, I can try to paint them to some level of acceptability uh, and stick them in there and add some scale and interest to the to the tank. I really like figures with tanks. I just haven't had the guts yet to, to attempt them. Now, there's one other thing I wanted to look at right here and let you be aware of. And, and that's this DEF model barrel that I bought. Uh... It was a few bucks, like less than five, I think. 
Uh, I got it thinking I would use it for the kit. Uh, as you can see, I haven't used it. Uh, and I'll show you why. Now, it says it's made for the Asuka, or formerly Tasca Academy, uh, the Tamiya IDF, uh, and the ETC M4. Now, um, that's not this kit. This kit is newer. Uh, it's based on the, uh, the earlier uh, EZ-8 that Tamiya came out with, the World War II variant. Uh, a couple years ago now I think uh, so it's going to be a little different I thought eh, if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't I have I actually have to me is boxing of the Tasca uh, kit that I somehow screwed up uh, we won't talk about that uh, but um, for this I thought I would I would get the barrel and then just see but what happened here was it's a little too wide at the base here to fit into the into the hole here um, now you can easily drill this out and then it would stick right in and you can see the end is a little different it has this shroud here which i assume makes it mount up to the tasca kit uh muzzle brake easier and i could have used the tasca kit muzzle brake uh, easily enough if i drilled this out and put it in here it would have been fine for that but there really was no point because the tamiya barrel is one piece molded and it's rather nice there was there was barely just a faint little parting seam I didn't even have to sand it with traditional sanding I just got one of these ultimate sticks here and just buffed it out and there we go it was it was nice and it'll fit up to the kit muzzle brake so it's not really needed it's a single piece barrel um, like I said this was only five or six bucks now something's weird going on here you can see it's like scratched up or 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 something I don't know if I was gonna use this I'd probably take one of these I found these work really well these ultimate buffers and just try to sand it out and see I didn't even attempt that I don't know what that would look like under primer uh, I don't like it the look of it anyway so I was gonna have to try to smooth that out some anyway and see what that was gonna look like I don't know if that's just uh, color imperfections or if there's some kind of, it's smooth it doesn't feel rough uh, that I've never used one of these def model barrels I've used some of the resin before uh, the only other metal barrels I have experience with are, are the Rubio, uh, and those have been fine. Uh, but this one here has something going on, so I was going to have to address that anyway. No point in using that. Uh, uh, besides that, not much going on here. Uh, the turret's underway, um, and we're going to start working on the upper hull. And anything I, anything I think that needs to be addressed uh, then will address.